we'll go through. Sorry, my computer just talked to me. Um, we're not going to go through introductions because there's quite a few people in here. Um, but for me, as mentioned before, I am from the Arizona National Guard Drug Demand Reduction and Outreach uh, Team. Um, I have been with the team for about three years. Um, I've assigned mainly to East Valley coalitions. I've helped out Mesa, Santan, and um, Stand Up AJ on Apache Junction. Um, I have a bunch of different things that I work on. Primarily, though, is this Snapchat presentation. And then the, some of you might have seen me with the drug take back events. Um, we already did the pre-survey, um, but today we're going to talk about what Snapchat is, how it works, where you can get onto the application or the platform. Uh, we'll go into how Snapchat and drug sales correlate or um, obtaining substances. We'll talk about online best practices, in-person best practices, and then I'll have some resources followed by the post survey um, that you guys will be able to do from this screen again, and we'll have the link in the slides. All right, so by show of comment, do you guys know how kids are obtaining the substances that they're obtaining today? Um, if that is marijuana, alcohol, prescription drugs, anything that they might be interested in, put in a chat how you believe that they're obtaining these substances. So I've got friends, social media, parents, through friends. All right, so it looks like the consensus is to is social media, friends, and friends or family members. Now, what we're going to talk about today is specifically the social media aspect of this. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, TikTok are just a few social media platforms that, are, that a lot of youth are using today. And they all have the same potential for being dangerous. But today, specifically, we're going to dive into Snapchat and what it is. Throughout this presentation, I would recommend that you guys, if you have the ability to take screenshots, do so. Um, if you have your phone, take pictures with your phone. Um, there's going to be a lot of information coming from this. So Snapchat's history. It, the platform itself was developed in 2012, or I'm sorry, 2011 by a group of Stanford University students. And it's, the current CEO is Evan Spiegel. It is based out of California. Um, the platform can be accessed on the internet, so World Wide Web websites. It can be downloaded on any iOS platform or Android platform. So anywhere where there is a Wi-Fi connection, somebody has the ability to get onto Snapchat. So why is it popular? Like the other applications listed in the previous slides, Snapchat is a social media platform designed to connect family and friends. However, most the most appealing piece to Snapchat is the fact that it has a self-destruction feature. Uh, Snapchat was developed and is marketed as a platform you can use to send messages, photos, videos with a viewing timer. And once that time limit is reached, that, those messages delete. Or if the conversation is closed, those messages delete. Uh, for videos or photos, the user can set a timer upon the person opening up the content that gives them a 10 second view time. Um, they can choose if they want it from one to 10 seconds or they can choose an indefinite time frame, which means that the messages don't delete and the person has the ability to save the content that is sent to them. Uh, for the messages, so regular text messaging, the user can choose that the message deletes as soon as it, the message is opened, or again, giving another 24 hours of view time for that. Um, if they choose that once the message is open that it deletes, when a message gets sent and then that ap application gets closed or another application gets opened on top of it, when you go back to the conversation, it'll be gone. The messages will be gone. Um, all content posted to an individual story is available for viewing time of up to 24 hours unless additional time is given by the original creator. Um, promoting that self-destruction feature has built a false sense of security with our youth and a sense of anim anonymity amongst them. Because again, what better way to send messages that we don't want the adults to see than through uh, an application that'll delete it for us. Mm -hmm. 
Snapchat's features. So there are a couple new features that I'm going to go over today. These are just, is just scratching the surface of some of their features. Um, they are constantly working to keep up with their evolving applications and trends. Um, again, the list you see here is very, very, very basic. Um, the newest one, though, is the Snapchat Plus. This was just put out within the last month. It's a three before they had done a, a beta version of a subscription to Snapchat, um, but they have rolled out a full functioning version and it's $3.99 a month where they get Snapchat premium or what they call Snapchat plus um, membership. I personally have not explored into this new feature, um, but we'll have information on it with time. Um, some of the other newer features is the Snap audio and video. What this is, is it's comparable to a FaceTime call or a Skype call that you would have on your phone. Um, through the Snapchat application, an individual can video call somebody that they're friends with. Um, they can audio call like a regular phone call to somebody that they're friends with. The interesting part about this is it's not tracked in the phone's call logs, or I'm sorry, in the application's call logs. You have to, you, you, ha you can see it in the phone call log and it shows as a Snapchat audio or a Snapchat video. Um, another one that I like to go over is the snap filters this you guys have probably seen on some other applications where they can put funny faces and different characters or different graphics on their photos to make them more appealing they can choose different filters a lot of things that i've heard from people who use snapchat is that they like using snapchat because the filters are better than any camera or any other application that they have so any of those other social media applications um, snap cash so that is a feature that's available when under that premium version where individuals can transfer money uh, Snapchat does partner with a lot of different platforms, and I believe Venmo is the one that they plan, they um, partner with for their money transfer options. Um, the Snap Score, so this feature is a competitive scoring system that Snapchat users strive to build. It also helps indicate how long an individual's been on the platform. So the higher the number, the higher, the longer they've been on or the more active that they are on this application. That number does build with the number of Snapchats sent, received, the number of stories that they've posted and some other unknown factors that are built into an algorithm through the company themselves. Um, but this, the feature that we're going to talk a lot about today is Snap Map because that's where a lot of the danger comes in for our kids. So this feature allows users to access a worldwide map of other Snapchat users who post public content. Then they can, from that content, they can um, see, they have the ability to add friends. They have the ability to um, potentially see where somebody is located. Um, the, and that's some of the new features that we'll go through today. Um, the con adding friends from the Snap, Snap Map, sorry, I get tongue tied, does come through the contact me button. And again, this is all stuff that we'll walk through and I'll show you how it works. So, that snap map and how it works. So when you open up the application, as you can see in the first photo, um, what you're looking at is a photo of my work computer, but it's through the Snapchat program. So when you open it up, it looks just like a camera function. At the bottom left, you see a drop down pin. And when you select that pin, it opens up that snap map. So that's that middle picture that you can see. Um, that middle picture, is what the snap map looks like once it first opens up. You can zoom in or zoom out using two fingers on the map um, and choose anywhere in the world that you want to zoom in or zoom out on. The individuals that you see on the map themselves, the little people, those are individuals that, or that indicates friends that I'm, or people that I'm friends with on Snapchat. Um, in that second picture, I do have the red circles um, highlighted. A lot of people, when they first see a snap map, they might, think that it is a weather map of some sort. Um, that is not the case. What, it, what the red circles indicate is that that area is hot with content. Um, the little blue shaded areas that you see all over that map is public content as well. It's just not, there's just not as much. Um, the more people that post in one area, the darker that that blue will turn into red eventually. Um, again, this is all public content, so you can look anywhere in the world at any time to see what's going on. The bubbles that you see around the little people, and those people are called bit emojis, but those little bubbles that you see are areas that Snapchat has decided have um, significance. So if there's a 
national monument if there's a big event they'll have their own um little bubble that indicates that there is something going on in that area or there's something significant where there might be a lot of people posting content as you zoom into that snap map that third photo you'll start to see that it starts to look a lot like a google map um, you'll start to see definition in roads the closer that you get as you can see in that fourth picture it will open up into a satellite type of map um, that blue shadow though does not go away so no matter how far zoomed in you are on the map you are able to see if there is public content there when you select or touch those blue areas it does run you through a feed of that content So this video will show you just a little bit of what it looks like selecting that content. Um, you'll notice at the top left corner of the phone that there is a city and state for where the content was posted and how about how long ago it was posted. Um, as you slide down, you'll, you'll it'll take you back to the main map so you can pick a new area to look at or look for something else that you may be interested in. So as I said, this is selecting random content. There's no reason, rhyme or reason why this individual's content is being showed to me. And as I touch the screen, it just scrolls through other areas nearby where I originally selected. At the top, you can say, see that it says Gilbert, Arizona, seven hours ago. And again, guys, I have no idea who these people are. Um, I just picked an area near Gilbert. And then as you close it, you can just scroll down and close it out and select a new area to take a look at. So some of the Snapchat's newest features, these ones are a little bit scary, but again, these are new within the last month. The first one is live location sharing. So Snapchat users have the ability of keeping tabs of people that they're friends with. It introduced, uh, Snapchat introduced real-time location sharing meant to be used for a temporary buddy system while their friends and family are in route or headed home. The original thinking behind this was for college students um, who it, it's a anti-bullying, anti-assault um, tool where friends can track their friends and make sure they get home safe or make sure they get where they're supposed to be going. Um, it can be set for up to 50 for up to 15 minutes or a few hours with individual users. Uh, it's only available between mutual friends. So it's not anybody can see, can have this live location access. You have to give it to the person that you're friends with. Um, you can pause the sharing without letting that person know that you paused sharing. Um, but the feature is off by default. So the only way to act, for it to activate or to use it is to go into the settings and up, uh, send it to the individual that you plan to share your location with or um, you send it through the messaging system to them and it gives them the ability to where you're at. The next feature, I think one of the most scary features that they've updated is exact address sharing. Um, these photos are stock photos, so we'll eventually be able to get some update, updated ones for here in Arizona, but the Snapchat feature not only gives away the user's physical address, but it also allows people to view how long it would take to get to that person, whether it be driving or walking. Um, you can see that in the first photo. So if I have a friend that I'm looking at on Snap Map, I can zoom into where they're at, click on their little bit emoji, and it will open up a, the city and state. It'll tell me what area that they're in, and then it'll give me an approximate time to get to them. That third little button that says more, when you open that up, it takes you to Google Maps. And if you've used Google Maps, you can see in the second picture, it gives you a direct route to them. And when it does that, that yellow part that's blocked out in the middle or towards the bottom uh, right or left of the screen, that gives you an exact address of where that individual is currently at. So we've went from being able to see where people are located and potentially being able to find them to if I'm friends with them, I can find a way, I can go exactly to where they're at if their location settings are turned on. So snap map and posting content on the snap map. In order to post content on the snap map, users have to take a photo um, with that photo video button. So like I showed you in the first photo uh, or the first set of these photos, 
Um, this is opening up the application and looking at my computer. And once I take that photo, I hit that round, white round circle in the middle. Once I take that photo, it opens up to a send to button at the bottom. When I select send to, it opens up a friends list that I can choose to send this um, message or the, this uh, content to. I can choose to add it to my snap map, which would make it public content for anybody to see. Or I can choose whoever I wanna send it to. I can select multiple people and do it in a group message. Um, it really just depends on what I feel like doing. I can post it to a story. If I post it to a story, it'll show up with a circle around my icon and anybody that I'm friends with will be able to see, click on it and see what I had posted. Now, when you do select to post on the Snap Map, the application asks you if you are okay sharing your location um, and it, it states that the content will be added to a public viewed map if GPS locations are on. So if your GPS location settings or if your map settings are not turned on, it won't allow you to post on Snap Map. It needs the location settings to be able to post it. So if your kids are posting on Snap Map, chances are the location settings are turned on on this application. So connecting with strangers, how does that work? So when you open up the application, you open up the snap map, you get to that first photo, you see something that you might be really interested in, and then you see that small button at the bottom that says view creator. Um, if you select that view creator button, that is when it'll open up and show you the individual's information. So as you can see here, I opened up the view creator button. I can choose to subscribe to this person and see any content that they post. And again, guys, I have no connection to any of these people that I'm seeing content for. But when you get to that, when you open up that view creator space and you want to look at where, or make friends with the person that you're looking at their content, you can subscribe to them. You have the they have the ability to add friend on that bar as well. Um, so this is all done directly from the Snap Map portion. And it gets better. So Snap Map or Snapchat has status indicators. Um, it imp implemented these indicators to to give a visual way of showing the status of a conversation that you're having with somebody. So the emojis are added next to the username when certain milestones are met. The number next to that emoji indicates the number of days that that milestone has been met. So what I want us to do is focus specifically on the line from the, the red arrow up and uh, where it says Amina girl up until the smiley face. So remember those three, cause on the next slide, I'll explain to you why they're important. So Snapchat's um, coded icons, we'll start with that first red arrow. If you guys remember that first red arrow, it has its own specific meaning. And there's multiple meanings for these indicators that show up at the um, far left-hand side of your conversation. Those will change as, as your conversation changes with that person. So a red arrow filled in is a snap sent without audio. So that could be a picture um, then as you move over to the purple, that is one with audio. And then a blue one is just a text message. When those arrows lose the filling on the inside and it's just an outline, that means that that has been viewed by the individual that it was sent to. Um, the received icons, so you those indicate that you have received a snap or multiple snaps that all do not contain audio. Again, these all kind of have a theme, um, but they all do mean something different. So when you see the, the squares without any or filling on the inside, it's just the outline, those indicate that your snap sent without sound or has been viewed. So when they're filled in, that's you receiving them. When they're a, um, just an outline, that is ones that you have sent. Now the ones below that, those double stacked arrows, those are screenshots of content that has been sent. So if you send a video or a photo or a text message and somebody uses their, the person you sent it to uses their device to screenshot whatever it is that you sent to them, 
then it will indicate to the person who sent it, hey, this person saved the content you messaged, because again, this platform is meant to self-destruct and not save the content. So if somebody does save the content for whatever reason, it lets the person that created it know. The reason that this is important to understand is if you're going through a snap map and you see some information or you see some content that's possibly illegal, um, if you choose to screenshot that, it will notify the creator of that content that you specifically screenshotted their content and it'll give them a, the ability to contact you. Now, if you add them to as a friend, um, that gives them the ability to potentially see where you're at if your location settings are not turned off. Um, the last little icon shown is the replay. So if you see a circle arrow, that means that your snap sent without sound and has been replayed. So somebody watched it again. So back to that first slide where we were talking about, we talked about the indicator on the left. The name in the middle is not a account name. What, and that's important to understand. These are just screen names. The account name can be something completely different. The screen name is what the individual that they're talking to will see. Now, again, the number is 13. That indicates 13 days. And then we have the fire symbol and the smiley face. So the fire symbol in, in these indicators means a snap streak. So what is a snap streak? A snap streak, it means that you have snapped this person every day and then that person has sent you a message back. So constant communication. Um, the smiley face indicates that that is a best friend of yours or Snapchat believes that that's a best friend of yours. Um, you send this person a lot of Snapchats. They're not the number one person that you talk to on Snapchat, but you've talked to them a lot. Um, what's interesting and what's important to understand with these milestone meetings is let's say that you look at your child's phone and they're talking to somebody and there's a baby face um, emoji next to that. So you know that they're a new friend um, and let's say that they have a snap streak. So they have a new friend that they're constantly talking to. Um, a couple of days later, you look at their phone again and you see the hourglass symbol next to it. Now you have it a new snap streak is about to end, which would indicate that the communication with that friend has dwindled down. They've not, they've stopped talking as much. So maybe a question to be had would be, who are you talking to? Who is this new friend? Um, and looking a little more into the situation. So again, if you have a phone, if you have a way to screenshot, this is a really good slide to keep around just in case you are looking at your use Snapchat and have questions. Sorry. So who is, who is using Snapchat? Snapchat's age policy is in compliance with the US Children's Online Privacy Protection Act or COPA in that the minimum age is only 13. Um, Snapchat does ask for date of birth upon sign up. And if the birth date indicates that they are not 13 to create account, but again, we know that that doesn't stop our youth. Um, just some numbers from Updated numbers from the quarter, first quarter 2022, Snapchat now has uh, 332 million daily users. This is up 67 million from January of last year when we started this. Um, a good news, I guess you could say, is that the United States is only is at 108 million users and India has now surpassed us. We were number one in the world for Snapchat users. However, India has surpassed us. Um, Another interesting fact, we got another age breakdown for the Snapchat users by age. 61%, um, so you take that 13 to 17 year old age range and that 18 to 24 year old age range and you combine them, you get 61% of users are 13 to 24 years old. The reason that that's, this is important is because your typical parenting age is 25 to 34 um, and obviously, we can go older 34 to four or 35 to 49, but just speaking of your 25 to 34 year old age group, only 22% have or use a Snapchat. So what does that tell us? It tells us that our youth are on this application far more than the adults that should be supervising it. Now they did, um, they do have a projection that the photo sharing platform Form by 24. Um, some research that 
I've been able to push that up to 500 million users. Um, I just don't have the official statistic on it yet. So teen application preference. Um, April of 2020, Market Charts conducted a survey with 5,200 teens, averaging an age of 16 years and two months. Um, in the survey, they concluded that teens favor Snapchat over Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook. And it's, it makes sense if you think about it because um, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook are more entertainment-based apps, whereas Snapchat is more of a communication-based app. So it's meant to communicate directly with other people where TikTok is video reels um, and Instagram, Facebook, Twitter are more photo reels. They obviously have other, other functions, but teens do prefer using Snapchat to communicate. So knowing the risks, um, Snapchat in and of itself is not bad. However, just like other social media platforms, it has its dangers that are unique to its platform. So the first thing parents should do should know is that Snapchat does not allow third, third party monitoring. So those apps like Bark or Life360, um, Snapchat will either stop functioning when those apps open up or those apps will not be able to uh, run when Snapchat is open on the phone. Because again, their whole premise is anonymity and having a third party monitoring does not work. I know that I've heard Bark does work on Android based phones for Snapchat. Um, I don't have an Android based phone, so I haven't been able to look into those. Um, but I know that there are applications. Um, iOS is really tricky to get around. They have a lot of controls when it comes to their, their um, operations. So they don't let a lot of overlapping with applications. Um, the application itself does provide user locations to others via the Snapchat. If you don't turn off your location, anyone that you are friends with can see where you're at. Uh, the disappearing content, the idea of the disappearing content, again, does provide that false sense of security for our youth. Uh, we talked about the screenshots. If screenshots are sent or taken, the content is sent to, or, or if screenshots are taken of the content, the creator is notified. And then it does provide the ability to buy, sell anything to include the illicit substances. Uh, Snapchat users looking to sell drugs can post anonymous public stories advertising their substances. Anyone around the world who uses Snapchat or who does not have an account with Snapchat but gets on their website can view this content. Snapchat users can provide the ability for viewers to contact them through their public stories. And Snapchat users can view public stories at any time, anywhere for anything. Um, we've had individuals who have had substances delivered to them. Um, so it's kind of as easy as ordering a pizza at this point. So we're gonna take a more deep dive into the Snapchat um, application when it comes to the substances and what that looks like, how easy it's become to obtain these items. Um, and you'll see some photos of some actual cases that have been, have been worked here in Arizona where Snapchat was involved. I've just got a message from someone called Plug Life. He just goes, hi. Hey, how are you? Oh, I keep asking how they are. <laughs> oh God, it's popping off. He wants to post it. And I guess in a way that kind of makes it less intimidating for kids to buy drugs. All I need is an address and a Snapchat account. Okay, I hope we are to proceed immediately. He's a bit aggy. I don't want to order from this guy. I got a message from this guy being like, yo, what's your order? Um, and where are you located? And I said, hey, I'm in London. Is that okay? And he goes, yeah, what's your order? And what's your address for drop-off? That literally took me five minutes. And I could already be going to pick up some drugs. So the ease of access to the world around the user that Snapchat provides makes the ability to obtain any substance nearly seamless and hard to catch if you don't know what it is that you're looking for as a caregiver. Um, in this short clip, you can see the reporter who establishes a fake Snapchat account with the intent to see just how fast she can get those illicit substances. Um, and as you can see, these dealers are fearless. Um, they will bring them to you. They don't care. They don't think that they are touchable when it comes to using this platform. Um, understanding how easy it is for a youth to get their hands on stuff leads me to discuss more about the trends and seeing 
uh, being seen around the US involving those counterfeit pills. So counterfeit pills are lookalike pills to real pharmaceuticals. Counterfeit pills are pills that are not provided from a doctor or pharmacy, but rather through production on the streets or by cartels and sold by drug dealers. Producing these pills gives the maker the ability to add anything to that pill like fentanyl and call it by its prescription name, such as Oxycontin or Percocet, which is depicted above. Um, with that being said, purchasing substances from complete strangers opens up a whole new risk to our youth. Uh, teens are often unaware of the contents and the substances that they are purchasing. In recent news stories, it's been reported that teens who overdosed on substances purchased from another Snapchat user thought they were buying items such as Percocet, but through the investigation process, it was proven time and time again that the product they overdosed on contained a deadly dose of fentanyl. Um, professionals in, teen, in the teen diversion field have also reported that more and more often they are seeing teens providing positive urinalysis tests that come back with fentanyl in them. And the teen's response to that is they either didn't know what fentanyl was or that they would have never taken that substances. So again, they don't know what it is they're taking because you can't tell the real from the fake anymore. The Arizona High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area um, here in Arizona has devoted 30% of its time specifically to Snapchat surveillance. Um, and they have seized more than $300 million in cash in the last three years just the, in just those cases. So you, the law enforcement in Arizona has rapidly had to understand Snapchat, use Snapchat to find these people um, and it's, an act, it's actively being used in their investigation processes now. So let's look at real world examples. This did happen in Prescott Valley. Um, in October 20th, 2020, a Prescott Valley 14 year old overdosed and died from fentanyl based pills or fe pills containing fentanyl that she obtained from two 18 year old males on Snapchat who have since been arrested. Um, the detectives obtained images on the victim's phone showing Snapchat conversations between her and the accused. So there was content on her phone that still hadn't been opened for them to be able to see what was going on. And you guys, this is the point in all of this. Our youth are dying. And part of the reason is that they have the ability to get anything that they want and they have a low perception of harm related to the substances you see, you've seen in Arizona youth as you see, we've seen in the Arizona Youth Survey data. And finally, they don't know what it is that they're actually getting. So who are those drug dealers? Those drug dealers are the same exact people that they've always been. Uh, they're the same people that you and I were educated on. The only difference is that they've moved off the streets and onto the internet. This means that the cartels are actively seeking individuals to push their drugs. Those drug runners are actively seeking buyers who are our youth, but they're doing it through Snapchat and online means now. There's no longer a need for to know somebody who knows somebody who knows how to get what it is that you're looking for. I've kind of coined this term as a non-acquainted contact because without that platform, um, that son or daughter may have never known that dealer. Um, it does, again, open up a whole new spectrum of problems and dangers for our kids today. So online best practices. We're gonna look a little bit more into the best practices and how we can protect our kids from this um, application. So the first and foremost, go easy on yourself. If you find out that your kid is using Snapchat or that they're on social media heavily, if you didn't know this was happening, uh, but you do have to remain honest with yourself. A lot of parents say, oh, well, it's just Snapchat. They're just sending photos. It's no big deal. Um, you have to be honest with what they're exposing themselves to. Many caregivers don't know the extent that their kids are on social media. Um, they might think it's just simply talking to friends and it's no big deal where in fact they're spending hours and hours and they're sending photos that could be very dangerous or videos that could be very dangerous or the conversations that they're having could be very, very dangerous. Some ways that you can keep up with the trends though in this is get your own, or first is you talk to your youth about what they are using or what they are doing online. Ask them to see their social media platforms. Ask them to see their Snapchat. Ask them who their friends are on their Snapchat. Ask them what content that they like to look at. They have different interests that you can look at on Snapchat. Um, then go and make your own Snapchat account. Make your own so that you can look around the application and really get familiar with how it functions. That way, if your child or your youth are doing something that maybe they shouldn't be doing, you have a little step ahead to say, well, no, I know this is how it works. So 
tr you know, tell me again what it is that we're that you're doing with this. Um, follow the same groups that your youth follows. This could come off as like being a hovering parent, um, but if you're involved in what their interests are, they're likely to talk to you more about what's going on in their life. Um, you need to be honest with them about what it is that you're doing. So don't try and do all this stuff in secrecy and hope that they don't see you or find you because when they do, they're gonna think that you were lying to them or they're not gonna trust you. Talk to them about this. Tell them that you're gonna have these same kinds of accounts. You're gonna be able to see what they're doing and hope and that they're not being spied on. Again, talk to your youth. You need to have that open, honest conversation with your youth and have it often. Um, this will become one of your most powerful tools. Before approaching your youth, start to ask yourself, is my child at risk for using alcohol, drugs, or tobacco products? Do their friends use them? Do they understand the risks of drug and alcohol use? And what would make them want to use drugs, alcohol, or tobacco? Um, knowing their stressors is, is very important. These can be as simple as being late to school, homework, tests, um, busy schedules, drama amongst their friends, chores at home, or arguments with their parents or siblings. But their stressors can look a lot like yours and mine. Some examples could be family financial troubles, violence in the home, parents divorcing, fears of separation, um, overwhelming sense of responsibility for that younger family member, and even concerns about having those basic needs met, being food, electricity in their home. Um, it's important not to write off your, your child's feelings when it comes to those big stressors, as I call them, because while we have to deal with it, they, there's nothing that they can do to fix those problems, but it's important that we recognize that they, they are stressors for them as well. When talking to your youth, you wanna avoid the yes, no questions. Ask more specific questions on topics that interest both you and your teen. So things like I saw what you posted on your story, it looks awesome. Tell me more about the pep rally yesterday or what, what are some of the groups that you're a part of in school? Um, sticking to more open-ended questions allows for the conversation to flow, and, whereas yes, no questions stops a conversation. Um, they are simple, non-threatening questions, which promote an easy way of, um, which provides an easy way to promote important conversations. Um, if stressors I are identified, again, talk through them with your kids. Try not to solve their problems for you unless they ask you to, but rather be express that you're there for them, even if it's just to listen, no matter the circumstances they're facing. A lot of kids just want to be heard. They don't necessarily need, you know, super mom, super dad to run in and save the day. They just want to be heard. And maybe one of the suggestions that you're making is going to be what they end up doing to solve their problem. Monitor your child's social media activity. So all of that said, you still have to monitor their social media activity. Know who they're talking to online. If you don't know the screen name or the person that they're talking to, ask them who it is. Um, ask them if these are real friends or just friends that they've met online. So they've never met them in person. Um, ask them what things mean if you don't understand what it is that you're seeing and reading. And this comes into play with my next slide, which everybody usually loves. <laughs> um, our kids have a new lingo. This lingo is being picked up by the drug dealers and through conversation and ads, and I'll show you some ads that involve them. Um, the hashtags, you can plug a hashtag into any platform and be able to search anything that has a description with that hashtag in it. So you don't have to be friends with the people that have posted these things. So if you go on to TikTok and you search hashtag 420, you're going to see a whole lot of people who have had hashtag 420 in the content that they've posted. You can do this on any social media platform. Now, when somebody is looking for something specifically and there is a street term for it, they can go onto the platform, search the hashtag, and they're likely to find a lot of content involving um, what it is that they're looking for. This middle column, this middle column, I like to tell people is comparable to LOL. So LOL came out many, many years ago. Um, laugh out loud, right? Well, it's progressed. Uh, um, DOE is drug of choice. PI is parent investigating. Um, POS is not what you and I think, but parent over shoulder. KD9 is code nine or that parents are around. KPC is keeping parents clueless. PAL, parents are listening, and then BLUES. BLUES stands for M30 or fentanyl, um, the blue little blue pill with an M on it. Um, 
there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of acronyms that kids are using today. So if you don't know what you're reading, look it up, look it up. Um, the other thing is the emojis. These emojis are being used in full sentence form. If you guys saw our DDRO Facebook, we even had a play on this in the last week for National or World Emoji Day. Um, each line that you see on here indicates a different type of substance. So that top line, any of those can indicate cocaine, uh, the one with the palm tree, any of those can, can, um, can indicate marijuana. The cart, the shopping cart at the end can indicate carts for a vape. Um, so if you see them sending a shopping cart emoji, don't know why they would need to, but they're pro they might be talking about carts for a uh, marijuana vape. The grapes is coating syrup. Um, the blue pill is any kind of pill, but to be specific, M30s. Um, these can be MDMA, any kind of pill form substance that they might be looking for, Oxycontin, Percocet, different things like that. Uh, the diamond, any of those can indicate methamphetamines. The needle in, can indicate heroin. And then you have magic mushrooms or shrooms with the bottom um, emoji. Some other ones that we have seen in, um, just even in ads is the gas pump. Um, this gas pump can indicate that an, a person is fueled, be, meaning that they're intoxicated, highly drunk, um, that they're getting gassed. Uh, the rocket ship indicates high potency. So whatever it is that they are talking about or whatever it is that they are using is really good stuff. Um, the plug, I don't know why this emoji exists other than maybe to indicate that you have a plug to something, a way to get a hold of a substance or a product. You know somebody who knows how to get that stuff. And then the pie, um, there's been a couple re, uh, indications for the pie itself. Some have said that it, it means that there's a large amount of drugs or a large amount of substances that this individual has. So instead of having a slice of the pie, they have a lot. Um, some other people in the college world have informed me that this could mean getting baked. Um, so there's multiple meanings for these emojis. Again, if you don't know what it is that you're looking at, look it up. Know what the drug deals look like. Here are some examples of what Snapchat drug dealers are using to promote their sales. Um, these are actually ones that have been used in investigations and closed already. Um, as a parent, you can report these anonymously if you come across them. You can select the three buttons at the bottom and choose to report these. Um, dealers will post photos of money that they are making, the guns that they are selling. They will post the actual drugs themselves. Um, I want you to notice the emojis that are in these photos. Again, they use the emojis to communicate without using actual words. Another step for protecting our kids is talking about that internet safety. So the basics, turn off your GPS capabilities, turn them off on the phone, turn them off on the applications, adjust your privacy location settings on all those social media applications to off on Snapchat. Specifically, this is called ghost mode. Uh, you don't wanna add or contact people that you don't know. So if, if, talk to your kids and tell them, if you don't know who this is, don't add them as a friend. If you don't know who this is, you're not gonna go meet up with them. Um, don't give out any personal information. It's important to understand that when you're taking these photos or videos, understanding your background. So, of course, you don't want to tell them your address. You don't want to tell them who your mom and dad are. You don't want to tell them what school you go to. But you also got to be careful and explain to your kids to be careful about what's in the background of the photos they're taking. If you're a police officer, for instance, and your children are sending photos and you can see any kind of police memorabilia or police uniform attire in the background of that photo that could make your um, that could stand out to the person that your child is sending the this content to. Um, they teach us this a lot in the military that you, you have to be really cognizant of what's behind you, but kids don't know this stuff. So it's important to talk to them. Um, for me specifically, I talk to my kids about, you know, because I'm in the military, we, we don't we don't take pictures of things in the house. Um, if we're outside, we don't take pictures in front of the, the plaque that says our address on it. Um, you want to empower your youth though and explain that they should notify somebody if they feel threatened or unsafe. This doesn't have to be a parent. It can be a close family member, friend, school resource officer, or counselor. And then you can show them that they also have the ability to report anything that they see online that's illegal, inappropriate, or unsafe. And that they can, again, do that anon anonymously. So when it comes to making a plan for your kids, you wanna do this 
when you start using social medias or you start using phones. So despite all of your efforts, your youth still find themselves in those sticky situations. You wanna to work together, develop a plan that your youth can follow. Emphasize to them that saying no to drugs is more common than not. And the majority of the kids their age do say no. Um, allow your teen to use you as the excuse to get out of that potentially bad situation or somewhere that drugs may be being used. Um, some examples that have been given is a child contacting their parents saying, hey, I forgot to feed the dog. Well, that family doesn't have a dog, but the mom knows if my son calls me and says, hey, I forgot to feed the dog, that is her indication that he's somewhere he did, doesn't want to be or needs to get out of. And so she says, you know, that's the third time this week you forgot to do it. I'm coming to get you. When that child hangs up the phone, they can tell their friends, my mom's upset. I have to go. Sorry, guys. You've, you've now allowed them to make you the excuse to get out of the situation and take that target off of them or that peer pressure off of them. Um, if your teen plans to leave the house, you wanna know the location of where they're going, the name and phone number of at least one friend that they're gonna be with. And then if for extra precaution, you can contact the parents of that um, teen that they're gonna be with. Um, let your teen know that it doesn't matter what time of day that they can call you. You know, if they get stuck somewhere and it's two o'clock in the morning, you are a person that they can contact that they should feel safe to get to reach out to to get help. Stay proactive. So constantly remind your youth that they are have a strong support system at home. Actively listen to their thoughts, comments, and concerns. Understand the resources that are available to you, your youth, available through the governor's office, youth, faith, and family, through the high intensity drug trafficking area, and the DEA, um, which all have parent talk kits that have tips on how to have a conversation with your youth um, for kids as young as preschool age on substance misuse. Uh, you want to develop a parent to youth contract outlining your rules and expectations regarding their online use or cell phone use. Um, when I started this presentation, I developed one with my two preteens who do have cell phones. Um, we put together a contract, they read through it, you know, we took out things that they thought were unfair, we changed things that, you know, we wanted to keep, but we decided, you know, we tweaked them a little bit to make it fit where we all agreed on it. And at the end of that, all of us, you know, my husband, myself, and the kids, they signed their contracts. And from that point forward, anytime there was a breach of contract, so to speak. Um, my children knew what the punishments were. We also included a phase of punishments. So the first time offense, second time offense, very, very um, court-like, but it helps them to understand that if they were to cross the line or if they were to do something that was outside of the rules, that there is no conversation, they know what the punishment's gonna be and they helped develop that punishment. Have a backup plan. Um, you may never need it, but you always wanna have the naloxone nasal spray in your home or car, depending on the temperatures outside here in Arizona, it's not recommended to keep it in your car just because it does get really hot here. Um, naloxone or Narcan is an FDA approved life-saving medical essential available at low to no cost. Our coalitions are direct distributors. So if you need some, get in touch with your local coalition. Um, majority of them, I believe, are naloxone distributors at this point. Um, this medication reverses the effects of opioid overdose, and some of the most serious symptoms of an over opioid overdose is respiratory arrest or respiratory failure. Naloxone has the ability to temporarily reverse the opioid overdose symptoms by binding the, the opioid receptors to reverse the and block the effects of other opioids until medical help arrives. So this isn't a save all. This is something that you that is administered in lieu of the um, paramedics being called. It's, it's there to help assist until medical help gets there. Um, the Arizona governor did sign HB 2355 in May, uh, May 12th, 2016, allowing pharmacists to dispense naloxone without a prescription to a person at risk of experiencing opioid related overdose or any family member that they may need to help. Um, some common analogies that I've used in the past when it comes to naloxone nasal spray is if my child were to have a fever, I'd rather have Tylenol in hand than have to run to the store to pick up Tylenol. Um, with this one, if my neighbor knocks on the door frantic because their child has passed out and they think they might be on, might have taken um, an, a substance or a drug, I'd rather have naloxone there to try and help rather than not. Um, it, it is three simple steps, peel, place, press. Um, 
the coalitions around the state do give classes on the naloxone nasal spray specifically, but opening the box, the directions are directly on the box. It comes with two applicators, so one for each nostril, but you just open up the package, place it in the nostril, and press the, the medication into the nostril. Again, one in each nostril. And you do this um, while calling 911. You also want to talk the law with your kids. So educate your youth on the Good Samaritan law and it, how it applies to them. Um, in Arizona, the law was passed in 2018 and it protects a person in the event that they need to receive aid or render aid as a result of a drug related overdose. In Arizona, we've had youth overdose and pass away while friends, while with friends because those friends were too afraid to call for help thinking that they would get in trouble. This law also protects those who, who administer naloxone in good faith, believing somebody is suffering from an overdose, so it protects them from legal action. Um, and this is under Arizona Revised Statute 13-3423, if you would like to take a look at it. Again, it does protect anybody from being in trouble if substances or paraphernalia are found on them as a result of them calling for help for a person who may be overdosing. Some resources, these are some local resources here in Arizona. We have Talk Now AZ, which has been done through um, the, well, that's who I'm here talking to you guys with. Um, Naloxone AZ, it does have a locator of all the, your nearest opioid overdose reversal drug um, distributors near you. Uh, our website with the National Guard is azpreventionresource.com. Um, findtreatment.gov allows you to locate treatment resources available in your area. And then the opioid, Helpline, which is um, was actually established in Arizona a couple of years ago and has been very beneficial to getting people the assistance that they need for opioid abuse. Um, I, we do have youth resources. Again, take a picture of this. Feel free to save this slide. Um, if Give this information to your kids. Um, there is, uh, I know schools that pass out ID cards and different things. Um, that have this information on the back, but give them the ability to contact somebody if they're in a crisis situation. It doesn't have to necessarily be life or death. It, they might just need somebody to talk to. Um, giving them this, this, um, these resources allows them that ability to, if they might not feel safe talking to mom, dad, or somebody that they personally know. Um, and with that, we jump into the post service. So again, I thank you guys for this. I'm gonna turn it back over to Jamie. Thank you, Sergeant Ashley, that was very beneficial. And as in the chat box, I did put that Map Force is an Arcan distributor and we also do provide training. So if you are interested in that, you can email me at info at mapforceaz.org and I can get you connected for that. Um, if you guys would like to take a minute in the chat box, there is the post uh, survey link. And then now's the time we're going to go over some questions. Um, we do have a question from Austin. Um, what is TAPN? TAPN. Was I believe it was one of the acro acronyms on the emoji slide. Or no, it was on the um, shot of how the drug dealers are posting their stuff on Snapchat. It had, um, like, that, oh, that is, that means um, to tap in. So to contact them. Okay. And let's see. Okay, we got a ton of thank yous. Um, not seeing any other questions. This is being recorded and I will send out the recording and um, we will send out a copy of the slide to those who attended. Um, I don't see any more questions, Ashley. So thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Um, I will, I'm gonna, let me get to my next slide and you guys have my, well, hold on. My contact information for anybody who does wanna reach out to me specifically for anything, um, please feel free to. I'd love to talk more. Okay, thank thank you, you so much. Have a great day, everybody.